Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. And welcome back to another edition of Issues in Education. Mondays during the Noon Report, we spotlight the issues that matter most to our public schooling families with Dr. Ralph Kerr at the Teaching and Learning Institute in Houghton, New York. Ralph, just a few more days till opening day. I know you can't wait. Play ball. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, going to be fun. And uh, let's start with this new poll from the Associated Press. And I thought it was really interesting. Love to get your thoughts on it. Seven in ten parents nationwide are afraid their kids are falling behind academically. I heard one expert say uh, that we're experiencing a pandemic of learning loss like never before in this country. If you would just talk about what the long-term impact of this will be, this learning loss. Well, you know, I have a lot of confidence in teachers, and particularly in the elementary grades, early elementary. Teachers have children come into their classroom, don't know how to tie their shoes, or they don't know their ABCs or that. But teachers have a knack of taking children wherever they are and moving them along. And I'm just confident that teachers are going to continue to do that. And hopefully most of the learning loss that will occur can be made up by really skilled teachers. Yeah. And if you're praying for somebody today, pray for our teachers. They could desperately use it right now. And the CDC uh, moving that goalpost when it comes to social distancing. Six feet is now three. That should go a long way to get the schools back open, uh, but New York's health department dragging its feet on this. How come, Ralph? Well, uh, part of it has to do with the unions. I mean, the unions have been, particularly in the big cities, have been just opposed to children going back to school for in-person learning. And this whole issue of moving to three feet, they want to retain the six before they didn't want to go at all. So it just becomes another excuse for, for not going back to school. And unfortunately, some people in state government say, well, we follow the science, we follow the guidelines. But then it turns out that they're kind of selective in, in which ones they follow. Yeah. And I can't wait for them to come around to the uh, agreement that three feet is plenty of space uh, in a classroom for children. Is it going to get to the point where uh, there's a representative in Pennsylvania by the name of Stan Saylor who's saying, hey, if you don't open full time in the fall, we're going to hold on to that state funding that you so desperately need. Do you think we'll get to that point? If the unions don't budge? Honestly, I hope that we will. We should have been there before. You know, it's just one excuse after another, which I don't understand in one sense, other than it's the union leadership, because the rank and file in the unions are, as I've said over and over again, are really good teachers that want to teach children. Yeah. And it's almost time for them to have a little uprising within their bargaining units and say, we appreciate your leadership. But we're going back to school to teach the children. Well, let's head from uh, the high schools to the college now in Pennsylvania. Big debate. The state system of higher education is floating this consolidation idea. Uh, Mansfield, Bloomsburg, Lock Haven would all be merged into one. Uh, that's not sitting well in those communities, Ralph. Your thoughts on the matter? Well, I think it's a response really to the fact that uh, over the last 10 years or so, there's been a 20 percent drop in students. And also those schools are dealing with the fact that many, many students have enrolled in virtual programs that are housed outside Pennsylvania. So they're really trying to find a way to overcome those difficulties that they're facing. They're looking to, for instance, reduce tuition by 25 percent, which is obviously going to mean that some faculty are going to be let go. Uh, so, you know, there are concerns about that. But as we've talked about before, apparently athletics are going to be retained by each school. Yeah. All those offerings are going to continue, and that should make a lot of people happy. Yeah, indeed. And then before we go, you know, this is the time that May school budget vote is coming up, and uh, this is the time of year. And even if you're not, if your kids aren't enrolled in public school, it's so important that Christians get involved 
in their local school district. This is the time of year if you are concerned. Why is that so important, Ralph? And what are some of the things people should be doing now if they are interested in perhaps serving on their school board? Well, certainly that's the case. If you look at the local and national news, you'll see issues every day that schools are dealing with, and many of them are policy decisions, and that's the biggest thing that you get involved in as a school board member is setting the policy for the district. And we really want to encourage Christians to take a look at running for their local school board and find out the issues that are being discussed in your local school and then contact the uh, clerk of the board to find out the uh, procedures for actually becoming a candidate for your local school board and do it soon. Yeah, and uh, again, that May vote will be here before you know it. Yes, uh, it will. And there's so much information on your website about this. If you're interested in serving on your local school board, Ralph, where can folks go and find out more information. Just simply go to whyrun.org, whyrun.org.